all three types, A, B and C, are um, transferred in an identical way. It's called autosomal recessive. And all that means is that both parents have to be a carrier of the faulty gene uh, to have an affected child. We all have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 pairs make us what we are, blue-eyed, blonde hair, etc. And the 23rd pair make us a boy or a girl. Um, in the cases of Neiman Pick diseases, types A and B are caused by a fault on a different gene to those of MPC1 and MPC2, um, but they are all transmitted in the same manner. When a parent has a child, they don't know that they are carriers of a faulty gene until they do have an affected patient, no matter what the disease. After that, we do know that parents have to be carriers, which has implications for future pregnancies. If they want further children, it may be that they want prenatal diagnosis in order to know beforehand if their child's affected or not. But it also means that parents' siblings may wish to know if they're carriers and the extended family often have genetic questions around the same area. When a parent has an affected child, it's very devastating and quite often, um, but not always, they would like to know in future pregnancies if they are carrying a child with Neiman Pick A, B or C. Um, and usually about 11 to 13 weeks they can have either a chorionic villus sample or an amniocentesis, which will give them the answer because they can look at the genetic uh, material that comes from the placenta, because that's baby's material, not parents, and say if they've got a mutation then the family know then um, what the future holds and they may want to continue with the pregnancy but then they have the option of um, terminating that pregnancy if it's um, what their feelings are. At the moment worldwide we don't have a lot of patients uh, hundred, in the hundreds. In the future once the registry is developed we should know as many patients worldwide as possible and at that point we may be able to do what's called genotype phenotype correlation so that if a child has a certain genetic makeup we might be able to predict whether they're going to be a childhood onset of neurological problems or possibly an adult. At the moment we can't do that because we don't have enough data but this is something we hope to do in the future worldwide. A recent case is a good example where we had an affected young lady in the south of England. Her sister um, knew there was a possibility of herself being a carrier and she was reaching the age where she wanted to get married and have children. So for her own peace of mind she um, wanted to know if she was a carrier but that involved checking the parents' mutations first just to see what we were looking for and then it was a very simple task to then look at the sibling um, to give her um, just a bit of advice that might um, affect how she um, continues in life when she marries.